So Chuck Mulvaney, uh, excuse me, Chuck Mulvaney, Mick Mulvaney goes back on to Meet the Press. He's been on Meet the Press, it seems like, every uh, every weekend. He's got right? a regular slot there. Regular slot. And it seems like he says the same thing every time. And one has to wonder, who is Mick Mulvaney threatening now? Because we've already established who pays the biggest price. Well, let me put it this way. We already have established who pays the first and second two biggest prices. The biggest price is paid for by, well, I guess contractors, um, folks who do all sorts of support staff for the federal government. They don't even get back pay. Then uh, we see the second tier of people who pay the price, and that is federal workers. Coming in a close third in terms of a political price, it's number one. It's the Republican Party. It's the Republican Party. Now, Donald Trump obviously thinks, like, mm, it helps me by a point or two, which I'm not surprised by. And so uh, Mick Mulvaney, I don't know who he thinks he's threatening here. But it's going to look pretty bad for Donald Trump if they have another shutdown. And within two days, you start to see workers basically say, we're not going through this again. It took us 35, 40 days last time to get to the point where uh, we were going to start to do some work actions. We're going to do that on day two. That's what I think is going to happen. And I would be surprised if we don't hear that from some of those unions within the next day or two where they say, guess what? We don't have the patience we had last time for this. But here's Mick Mulvaney on Meet the Press. Now, and really, what I want to know is, why isn't there a representative of the flight attendants union or uh, the TSA union sitting right next to Mick Mulvaney and say, like, you're going to do this to us again? Good luck, buddy. Fair to say, whatever Congress agree- hands him, he'll sign. He just may not be enthusiastic about it. No, I, I don't think so. You're I, not ready to go there. No, I, you can't, can't definitive. We cannot definitively rule out a government shutdown at the end of this week. You absolutely cannot, and here's why. Okay. Let's say, for sake of this discussion, that the Democrats prevail, and the hardcore left-wing Democrats prevail. There was a Democrat congresswoman who put out a tweet and, yesterday about zero dollars for uh-huh. DHS. So let's say that the hardcore left wing of the Democrat Party prevails in this negotiation, and they put a bill on the president's desk with, say, zero money for the wall, or eight hundred million, some absurdly low number, how does he sign that? He cannot in good faith sign that. It takes a presidential signature for the that. spending bill. But to can you imagine wall. Senate Republicans would go along with a proposal like that? I Are you that skeptical of Senate Republicans? I don't think so, but you asked me a question. Yeah. Is a shutdown entirely off the table? The answer is no. So, but $2 billion, you sit here with this loose compromise that we see, and supposedly you guys are coming to an agreement tomorrow. Um, because in order to get it passed by the end of the week. Is that, a, is that still the loose deadline? I, I've been told it's today. I was uh, oh. at Camp David with a couple of conference members on Friday night, and they were told to be in town today to get ready to sign a conference report. But is it? Yeah, guess what? That didn't work out so well. Uh, negotiations collapsed, I guess, uh, either late Sunday or early Monday. Um because the um, they've been trading back and forth, according to, uh, this is the Washington Post, the 17-member, it was a conference committee that's between uh, House and, and uh, Senate leaders, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, they were looking at between $1.3 billion and $2 billion for the, um, the wall. Uh, I think that's probably just like the architectural fee uh, that you would pay. Democrats also had been focused on limiting ICE's ability to detain unauthorized immigrants. Not their, uh, it really should be capacity, not so much their ability. Because it basically said, hey, this whole thing where you're now housing 15,000 kids and where you keep um, finding money to build more and more detention centers, we're not down with that anymore. It, the proposal from the Democrats included a limit on the number of detention beds for immigrants um, in the interior of the country. They wanted to cap that number at 16,500. 
That's the number of the level of interior detentions in the final years of the Obama administration. This is inside the, uh, the country, not at the um, border. And apparently uh, the Republicans said, no way. We want the BLM. <laughs> this is a growth business for us. Um, and so talks have broken down. We shall see uh, what happens next. It can get very, um, it can get very disorienting to follow this on a day by day basis. But uh, is that just like keeping him in some type of like emotional equilibrium for the next? Like we talk tough, and then whatever like fake deal we get, we're gonna say that we was because we talked tough. That's definitely part of it. I think so. Uh, I also think that there are uh, people in the White House who might have, uh, you know, an idea that either the American public is more anti-immigrant than they think it is, uh, or that um, that they maybe maybe they need to run against the Republicans on this too.